We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Show Must Go On Line. Today's guest is Sasha Hutchings. How are you doing today? I'm so well. I'm happy to be here. Hi. Happy to have you and happy to have everyone in the comment section already. I see you, <laughs> fam. Hello, hello. We've got Kirsty. We've got Miranda. We've got Claire. We, we will see your comments throughout if you have remembered. Yes, I love it. We have people from all the way across the sea over here, oh, which is fantastic. Really, really cool. So if you have any comments or questions throughout, just drop them right there. Judy, one of my show trions, that's a BYU show Patreon squad. She's awesome. So hello, hello. <laughs> so let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. And let's hear your origin story. What got you into theater and acting and dancing and singing and all that jazz? Oh gosh. So uh, I, it was sort of a slow burn is how I always describe it for me. Theater was, um, I, but I started dancing at the age of gosh, three years old. And that I'm quite sure was just because I've always been the person that I am and I'm pretty busy. And just, I think it was like the thing to do. Mom was like, gotta get her in something, put the little girl in dance. She'll be great. Um, so I started dance lessons and I just never stopped. I've always loved dancing. I've, I mean, I still love, it's just, it's such a, it's a part of, I've never had a life without it. So it's really important to me. Um, and it's been hard in the pandemic to not be in a room dancing with other people because it's just, it's truly, I realize it's such a rhythm in my life, um, since the age of three. But, um, basically I did that until, uh, college. I, I went to school for dance. Um, I didn't want to be a ballerina. I didn't want to go into company dance. And when I say I didn't want to be a ballerina, I mean, like it literally was not an option. Like if I wanted to, they were going to be like your feet and your knees. No, ma'am. No, thank you. So I, uh, started, I got into theater, uh, uh through the dance program. Um, I went to Oklahoma city university in Oklahoma and they have sort of like a, 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 an American dance, if you will. So it's a lot of very based in jazz and tap. You take ballet every day, but there's just not a lot. I don't know any, of any other program that really focuses on American jazz and tap in that way. And so um, that of course lends itself to Broadway. And so uh, we would audition for summer stock during the summer. So <laughs> thanks Catherine. Uh, we would audition for summer stock and I, um, I auditioned for like, I think it's so funny that you framed this question this way uh, because my very first show was The Sound of Music. And I was like a little, what do they call a, not the apostulate, like the little, like not a nun. Like I was like a baby nun. Like you're like a, a mini nun, not a nun yet. And um, yeah, I, that is, was my entrance into music theater that summer. And that sort of, I don't know, it just opened up a world of like being able to use all different ways to tell a story, whether it's through words or song and dance, of course. And from there, um, yeah, I just, I, I just loved it. I loved being a part of an entire world and I loved the community and the people. And from then on, I was like, well, whatever it takes to do this, like we're gonna do it. Mind you, I had no, I did not sing really. Like I, I barely sang when I, I started doing musical theater. Um, when they gave us sides to read in the audition, I was like, what do they mean read? Like, what do they want us to do? Like, I don't understand. And my friend was like, just read the words on the page. So I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. And so like, you know, but I do understand telling stories. I sang some very inappropriate songs for that season. Um, I think I was singing like Jekyll and Hyde and like the main shows that season were like uh, The Sound of Music, Swing, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. This is like not appropriate music for those shows, but I did enough to where they were like, a little spark there, let me like her, like let's see what she can do. And I really, um, yeah, that, that was my entrance in. <laughs> you really fanned a spark into a flame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Gigi saying that is a big mood. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so we have so many people here, and I would venture to say most of them know you from being an original Broadway cast member of Hamilton. That's pretty exciting. How did that all happen? 
Uh, so I moved to New York City. I um, started auditioning and got into some a couple of Broadway shows. And I I have always um, sort of utilized my network and, and the people that you work with. And I think that's true of every industry, but it's especially helpful in theater, um, who you know, because you're going to be spending lots of time in the dark with people. So you kind of want to know if they're cool or not, or like, are they going to be like good to work with? And so when you can get a referral from a friend to a friend, it always like serves you very well. So that's kind of, I ended up in the room, um, in the audition room for Hamilton that way. And I uh, just really gave it my all. I really just gave it everything I had for that audition. And so I ended up joining the cast um, for the first sort of uh, what we call like a lab or workshop. Um, now they're called like work sessions, the contracts change, but the work doesn't. We were in the room figuring out the show for the first time, putting choreography to the show and figuring out like what it meant on its feet. And that was the first time Andy was adding choreography on its feet. And it was just, it was very, very exciting. And it's my favorite part of the process is development. So to be able to join, I mean, I mean you would want to join Hamilton at any point in time, but to be able to join it on the ground floor and be a part of it and really look at things, you know, now four or five years, almost five years later, well, no, oh my gosh. It's been like seven years since we first, since I first started walking on that, working on that show, almost seven years. So just to look at like the movie now and see all those pieces of everyone that we were sort of like layering in over and over, over the years um, through opening was just really special. Are there any fun Easter eggs that now that we're talking about the Hamill film, people can look out for? Oh my gosh. I mean, truly just Thane and I giggling at any point in time. Like he's been my partner since the very beginning. And I remember, <laughs> I mean, the way, so um, you look at the, the entrance of the women for um, helpless, satisfied, or well, helpless, the type of it. And we're sort of circling, we come around and we meet up with our guy, right? Like they're on one turntable, we're on another, and we sort of meet up with them. And I remember the way that happened was sort of, I mean, unless Andy was really orchestrating this in his head, he was just like, okay, ladies, like line up and like, okay, just enter and like, this is a step and just see where you end up. Because we didn't have the turntable, we didn't know. He kind of had in his head how it was gonna um, like rotate, but we had no idea. And so we, d it was like musical chairs. It was just literally, we just like, entered and it was like who you ended up with he was like okay now track back like just one quarter because and I, yeah he had like the calculations in his head of like how far the turntable would go and so i ended up with Thane. and my first thought was like i'm the tallest girl in the ensemble he is the shortest guy in the ensemble how the hell is this gonna work and i am so glad he was my dance partner he is the best dance partner he has very long arms so he made up for the height difference and i just say like he's just the best best like partner and we had the most fun we were always giggling and like every i think every couple had their personality and um and describes there's the part where we're running off after i think in the middle of helpless satisfied i like take Thane's hand and we run off and he's like you guys look like you're gonna go like rustle around a, in a, a bill of hay and that's kind of how it felt like dancing with Thane every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Miranda saying Thane giggling should be its own show. Yes. Oh my God, a hundred percent. I miss it. It just like makes my heart ache. Oh, imagine it, listening to that every day. It's so good. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, it is one of those shows that a because it's so long. It has so many depths of really highs and very emotional pieces mm -hmm. that to find the joy in every moment is really so important. And it like keeps it going, I'm sure for the actors on stage. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's a ride. And it was really lovely to have a piece that does that not only in story, but in, in movement and sound and style. Um, everything, there's just such a variety in the show. And it was just as a dancer, as an actress, as a singer, all of it, I just felt so challenged. And you don't always get that in, a, in, a, in one piece, in one experience. Um, so I really, yeah, you start out the show and it's cool. Like it's literally snaps. And then you just rev up and you get into Yorktown 
and really hit a peak with like room where it happens. And then you get into like quiet uptown. You're like, we still have like a whole show left. Like it's just the way the 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 way you could ride that that show and the stories that you were going through really it was it's lovely. Um, it's one of the great things about theater when you get to come back to a thing. It's hard to do eight shows a week. It's hard to do eight shows a week for a year or two years or however long you stay with something. Um, Thane is still in the cast. I will I will say he's still doing Hamilton. He's just last original cast member left, last man standing. But um, it's really, uh, you get to come back to the work and be in different, like a different mood or a different, like, you know, today this happened to me. And so when I'm in this number, I feel different. And it's just nice to experience a piece of art in that way as the artist in it, just to bring different shades of yourself and discover different shades of the character, depending on who you are that day and how you're coming to the work. Oh yeah, true. Because you are human beings first, right? I think sometimes people forget that. <laughs> we uh, forget too. I forget. I forget. <laughs> that's fair. So Lisa over here has a question. <laughs> I see. I was seeing this. I was seeing this. I gosh, I have to. I have to remember it. Okay, what's the lead up to it? Just that Broadway a couple of blocks. He was going to see a play. Well, I'll go visit his. God, you're a fox. Yes. Let me tell you, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different ways to say that line and only a couple did Tommy actually allow, but. Um. <laughs> I love that. How many different things like in that line or any of the dance moves with Andy where they're like, this is how it is. And then like, you can have some creativity. Well, right. That's the cool thing about being in an original cast and being in the original process is that there's a world that you're all creating together. So you're all building it together. So there are I, like there are clear ideas. It's the best thing when you step into a room and the writer has been very clear about who this character is and the director is very clear on how the shape of the show and the and the choreographer has like and you know has the movements, has the 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 style and everything is clear. Like you can step into a very structured thing, lack, like you know, he's like, this is the note, sing this. So you're not, wa you're not walking into something. It's not great to walk into something that's not finished because you're, you know, you're coming as the actor, you're coming as the dancer. You know what? You're like, well, I need, I need to know what I'm stepping into. Like, what's the ship? Like, where, where are we going? <laughs> like, you know. But then the best part after that is like, once you have been given tools to know, to get to know the world, to get to know, to get the rhythm, then it becomes a lot of like, well, we don't know what that is. Like now that you know the language, now that you're in the room, now that you understand like where you're on board, you're you're on the vision. It's just like, now what do you bring? And that's the best part. So then you just start playing, right? You just start, I need something that looks like this, that a lift that goes like this or this shape. Can you, then we need something circular on the floor. Or can you have something square here? like literally something that's about him thinking. So you just start moving like that. I'm doing a lot of the dancing. And then the women, you know, the sister started singing and doing like riff, you know, challenges in their like room together. And then that goes into the score in a certain way. Like there's so many things in the, in the show that are reflective of the people in the room. And it would be a different show. It would not be less or more with a different person there, but it's just so cool to see like, everyone bringing it in and then, 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 then you eventually land on something. Like the director lands on something, the writer lands on something, they say, that's it, that's what we like, that's what we're keeping. Because you do have to codify the thing, you know? Otherwise it does go, it will literally go off the rails. Like you, and then that becomes the place where then like, you have this battle of like the creatives trying to keep you within the guardrails of your own performance. Like they're literally, and you're like, you just like, sometimes it's frustrating because you want to keep finding new things. And then sometimes it's good because you're like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. I mean, I've had both. Like I've had like found a new thing and been like, oh, I love that. And then gotten a note and been like less of that, less of that, Sasha, please. And then I've gotten, you know, I've done a thing where I've, um, I've uh, totally forgotten a step and I've had like, like Stephanie Clemens, our associate choreographer come up to me and she's like, what are you doing right here? I was like, I don't know anymore. Can someone please show me this step again? So it's just, there's a lot of leeway, but then it kind of narrows and settles onto the sh what the show that you know, and also the show that then other companies can go learn and share. So I, I love the original, I love being a part of that development because you get 
there's a little more freedom in there to help find a thing and shape a thing. And then, you know, after that, you kind of got to stick to the script. Yup. Yup. And uh, speaking to the sticking to the script, we've got Slimbo here, my co-host. Hi, Slimbo. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, so he'll probably be in and out. But if you hear a dog barking, that's why. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Are you a pet person? I am. I don't have any pets. I have plants right now. Um, oh, yeah. I find I love dogs especially but I am not committed to taking care of one and not not in New York City I think if there was an outdoor space that I had maybe but I do love dogs and I I found myself recently with the urge to hold a puppy like which I guess most people find themselves with on any given day but I really was like I need to get to a pet store not a pet store I guess like a breeder is better or like a shelter shelter I'm like hold a furry animal but i don't i don't have enough discipline like to to like do to take care of it myself not yet i like i water my plants as best i can (laughs) that is a strong step you're doing great (laughs) i love plants now don't get me started on the green oh yeah yeah (laughs) oh yeah i see it all over your social media and i love it i've actually started like actually having flowers here on a daily basis because it's just nice. Yes, it's so nice. Yeah, we're getting into spring, so there's gonna be get some fresh cut flowers. You wanna? My friend left me some flowers. Um, I was away and she was like house sitting and taking care of my plants in my apartment, and she left me some fresh cut flowers, and I just was like, oh, it's spring! I can't wait because that's the best. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if you know this, but Shoshana means rose in Hebrew, so it's I in my name. I know that. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. So we will get beyond Hamilton in just a moment because you have such a strong career. So I don't want you know <laughs> you to think that we only are going to be talking about that. But I figured we would like condense Hamil talk and oh, then kind I love of. It. It's <laughs> a great show. You should see it if you haven't seen it. Watch it on Disney Plus. <laughs> Great promo. Yeah. Have you gone back to the show to see it like in the audience? I have not, not since I left. Isn't that wild? And I really thought for like maybe this year, maybe like this year, like everything, I was like, I should take a trip back, but I have not been back. Um, there were companies like chances maybe to see like another company that I was like, Oh, I have friends in this company. It'd be great to see them, but I have not seen the show. I have literally not been back in the building since I left the show. And, but I did get to see it while I was there and I did get to see, to sit out in the audience a little bit. Um, not in like a regular seat, like it's sort of like crouched down trying to see everything. Um, but it did make it did make seeing the show on the film very, very special. Very special. Oh, yay. Oh, I'm I'm so happy to hear that. First of all, I'll say, you'll be back. I'm sure you'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that experience like? I mean, first of all, the filming of Hamilton and then to watch it as someone who's in the original cast, seeing yourself and your ensemble on screen. It was beautiful. I just saw so many special moments. And what was really uh, striking for me um, was that this was filmed over over a year after we opened, right? So, um, oh, no, not not over a year. We we opened in August. So almost a year um, when we had opened. Yeah, because we had to, it was catching the original cast. And um, so everyone was, and it was after the Tonys, and it was after the Grammys, it was after all the things. And everyone was so settled into their show. And the only way that I've experienced the show really and the cast since is the soundtrack, is listening to the soundtrack or if I'm teaching classes, like listening to the music and listening to everyone. And, and that has become the performance that I remember. And so when I saw listening to, like literally just listening to the sound of the Disney Plus film and listening to the way lines were being delivered, I was just like, oh yeah, I remember like how com not I wanna I don't wanna say comfortable, but it's like a worn in jacket, like a leather jacket that fits really well. You know, it's not as crisp and it's got some cool like scratches on it and that's how it felt watching like the Disney Plus film was just everyone felt so 
in their in their role, in their show, in their performance. And I remember I was having a blast doing it because we were so comfortable with it. We knew the show. Like we had, again, we had done the big like press things and the big awards things. And so that show was just, it was being able to film it at that point was such a like celebration and just like a really cool time capsule of that moment. Ooh, time capsule. I love that. Yeah. It really is. And it's so special that, I mean, of course, Hamilton was the hottest ticket in town and it still very much, you know, is. And so to have this beautiful version that everyone can see, if you have Disney Plus, it's way more accessible. I mean, Hamilton, especially with original Broadway cast, it was crazy. You couldn't get a ticket. So speaking of all of those events that you went to, was there like a craziest moment of like self-reflection? Like this is happening. Um, Being in the White House, definitely. And honestly, I don't know. It's probably to everyone else's benefit that I was not as big of a fan of the West Wing as I am now. I came to the West Wing post uh, Hamilton, Washington trip because now all I can do is think about the rooms and places that we were in. And, um, but that was definitely just being in that White House at that time with that show. Um, so special, just truly so special. Like, yeah. I love it. Some of those videos pop up on my YouTube as like, do you want to watch this? I'm like, yes, I do every single time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wild. Just to think of what that meant. Like, like, mm -hmm. because I think I watch, I do, I watch the West Wing now. And I look at like when they had like groups come in, you know, or performances come in. And then I'm like, that was us. Like, if the West Wing were happening now, they'd have an episode about like the hottest show coming. Like, I just was like, oh, like, and I, I just, I kind of wish, I, it's almost like I wish I could go back and observe like the staff and like how they were like observing us. Cause I just felt, I don't know, Hamilton, you know, it was this huge show, but I was like, this is the White House. Like you guys are so busy, like with, you know, like, I don't know, national security stuff. Like it just, so <laughs> to be, to, to, but to understand more, I think that was the cool thing about Hamilton was when people came from different worlds it was so nice like for to meet people when you were both like sort of equally enthralled with each other just like oh like they were uh -huh. kind of very excited to be backstage with us but i was always like just you know so excited to meet whoever had come to the show and then we got to instead of doing like the oh my god let me can i get you a picture and can i can i do the we would you would end up in conversation with people about theater and about art and about what they were working on. And I just was like, this is everything. Like, I just, I love like this community. I loved it. Mm, that sounds so very special. And we've, <laughs> we are all West. Bartlett B. Bartlett, yeah. I know, <laughs> like, I just like, I don't know what, it's better, it's better, it's better this way. It's better that I came to the West Wing binging post Hamilton at the White House. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> oh, God, it's good. <laughs> it's so good. So this feels like the perfect transition from West Wing and Hamilton into the Chaos Twins with Nick Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> that is so crazy. I have no idea. So how did that friendship and then, you know, turning the friendship into this, like, <laughs> wonderful video series that all of us get to enjoy. And we all get to be a spy on the inside. It's true, it's true. So uh, Nick and I first worked together briefly, briefly, briefly. We have only worked together briefly, which is insane. We've never shared a theater for more than three weeks, maybe. Like it's kind of silly. Um, but the first was on in, in Motown the Musical. So I was doing Motown <laughs> and Nick uh, came in to join the show and I was on my way out. I was leaving to go to another show. So we overlapped a little bit, but of course, like he's learning the show, I'm on my way out. I came back into Motown for um, a brief like sort of period for, I think it was literally three weeks and I was covering a vacation. And so I had, while I was learning the show, I had a lot of downtime because this track didn't do a lot. I already knew the show. And I was just learning like this one specific track. 
that I had already covered. So I just, there was very little that I like had to come in. So I had some, maybe some free time on my hands. We were hanging out backstage and we ended up just, um, I, there's not a lot of logic to it, like to be fair. So I'm just going to say like, we decided that the perimeter was not secure. The perimeter of the La Fontaine was not secure, that theater, and that we needed to secure it. So we found some tools with which we, you know, would, would try to do that. And which included a plastic baseball bat, um, two plastic baseball bats. I found some fringe that went around my face. Nick had a Wolverine mask, I believe. And I found a flower that I stuck into the mask. Um, in none of this, we just found things and things were given to us. Like the fringe was like a costume piece, an extra piece of costume that we told the costumers the wardrobe downstairs, we were like, we're securing the perimeter. And they were like, do you want this? And I said, yeah, actually I was looking for that. And I tied it around my face. Um, and we just ran around the theater like that for a good hour probably. And just like it up and down, like the, through the house, like through the, on, like not through, through the audience, but like we were definitely in the same space as the audience through like concessions. We went up to stage management. Like we just, and told everyone that the when people said, what's going on? We said the perimeter's not secure and we have to secure it. And uh, I don't know if we succeeded in securing the perimeter that day, but we did succeed in securing our friendship. And um, the next time I saw him, I think was, I mean, the next time we really, really crossed paths was when he was coming into Hamilton. Um, it has to be, I think we, yeah, he was coming into Hamilton and um, I think I greeted him in the stairwell with like a musket and like an Uncle Sam like hat that I had found. I was just like, welcome to the jungle. Like I just, it was ridiculous. Um, we would watch the West Wing. We watched an episode or two of the West Wing together once in the uh, the Marriott Marquis like restaurant level. Like they have free Wi-Fi there. So we were like, let's watch. And we literally had our headphones. And, like, oh, very yeah. familiar. And it was just like, <laughs> It's just silly. Like, it's always so random. But some of my best friendships are that way because it speaks to, like, definitely um, just a deeper, like, bond with someone that's not about – it wasn't about a show that we did. It's just about, like, a vibe. <laughs> like, I have vibes with people, and I definitely vibe with Nick. And it's all around nonsense and chaos. Like, we – I think our uh, another friend of ours who's not far off from this vibe, um, she named us the Chaos Twins. Um, and she was like – you guys are just, it's just chaos when you get together and you're chaos twins. And so this uh, past summer, uh, Nick, I believe, was doing Insta Live, like Instagram Live. Um, <laughs> Marriott Wi-Fi, thank you. Like, truly, help me out a lot. Uh, the food is way overpriced, though. So you have to, all you can get is some French fries, really. Um, but I, um, yeah, this summer, I believe he was doing Instagram live stories and just connecting with people throughout the pandemic. And he hit me up one day and was like, hey, <laughs> in true Nick fashion, hey, I'm trolling people on the internet. Do you want to join? I was like, 100%. I had no idea what he was talking about. But I was like, yeah, it's Nick, sure. And then we, I, he said troll. So I showed up on his Instagram live with like glasses and like a love child sweatshirt from Motown, all this stuff. And I like logged on and he was having very serious conversations with people. And I was like, Nick, like what is happening? Ugh. And so then we had like this wild exchange and he was like, okay, I gotta go. And then the next person I was like, I tuned in again and they were like, yeah, I'm like, you know, sustainable farming or something. And I was like, what? I was like, Nick, you did not prep me for this. Like, I didn't know you were having meaningful conversations. I just like, but, it was hilarious. And he was like, okay, you have to come on again. And so we did it again and again. And we basically ended up just having these conversations on Instagram live and Broadway world, like so graciously after and basically, you know, it was already a pandemic. And then you had a ton of protests and everything with the death of George Floyd, a ton of protests, a ton of um, just conversations starting up again around uh, racial, just violence against black, you know, black people, black men, the police violence, police brutality, inequality, racism, structural race, like just all the things, you know, that eventually became, have become some buzzwords that we, that should be buzzwords. But um, 
anyway, people are trying to find ways to talk about that, right? Like people are trying to find ways to talk about that, voices to talk about that. And um, I don't know if you guys remember the word amplify, but it's out there. And, uh, but one of the wonderful things was Broadway World came to us and said, we were watching um, Nicole over at Broadway World and uh, they, she, uh, I think she contacted Nick and said, you know, we were watching, I think that this is uh, great and, it, we, it was just like nice to hear your voices on this. And if you want, like we'd be, we'd love to invite you onto our, um, onto our StreamYard platform, StreamYard. And we said, yeah, duh. <laughs> and so it's been really, really like lovely having that platform. Um, and yeah, that's basically how it's, and we've just been building the show out from there. Like it's really, um, with like Rob and Nicole uh, at Broadway World. And now we've brought on some producers and we're trying to get a little fancy with it. And, you know, we have our YouTube channel. We're now on, we have our Facebook channel now. Um, so you can watch us bi-weekly. We just had a show yesterday. We'll have another in two weeks on April 7th. But um, yeah, it's been amazing. And it's just really opened up a space for Nick and I do. I, I really feel like give a glimpse into like the kinds of conversations that he and I have offline anyway. And it's actually definitely brought us a lot closer together as friends, considering before that it was like, you know, securing the perimeter at Motown and then me like chasing him out of the build, like, you know, the building at Hamilton. So it's been, and at Hamilton, even he came into the show, I was on my way out already. Like we've always been passing ships in that way, but I've really enjoyed the platform we've been able to build together. And we love watching it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. And it's been so much fun. I remember that first Instagram live stories because it's just it's one of those things that you're like, oh, OK, Nikki walks and Sasha. Yeah, I'm going to tune into that. And just the vibe changes of like, this is serious. This is goofy. This and that's actually really nice. And I think goes well to what the chaos twins are, because you get these like really great behind the scenes moments where it just feels like we're lucky enough to drop into a conversation that the two of you just happen to be having. And oh, look, it's it's being filmed and we're there. And then also there are some serious ones. And the one yesterday uh, was really powerful. So it's just, you're get you're giving us all of these different parts of yourself and you're letting us inside. And that's, uh, it's really special. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's chaos. I mean, we're all living, we're literally living through chaos. It's just insane. <laughs> And yeah. uh, it's not lost on me that that is where Nick and I have found a show is that in the middle of a pandemic and a summer of like protests and social unrest. Um, but I really, yeah, it's fun. And I, it's the way that we kind of deal with things. And I think apparently it resonates. So yeah, it does. And we've got a comment here. The chaos twins episode with Lynn Manuel is the best. Very, very fun. That was back when we were still <laughs> taking shots on the show. And then <laughs> yeah. now I was talking about that. I was like, we used to take shots and now we all like, we kind of, you know, have been transitioning and have been picking up other work. So Nick is like a full professor. Like he has a full class that he has to go be <laughs> responsible to after we have a show. So I was like, I can't wait for us to be able to like have a shot at the end. But that, that show with Lynn was very, very fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's really fun to see all of these different fams coming together to support one another and um, just your guests and everyone's attitude towards one another when you have JMI on. Obviously, that's going to be a good time. And <laughs> just uh, all of it, all of it. I am. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that sums up the Chaos Twins very well, because anyone who watches it it lifts up, uh, it lifts us up. It talks about serious issues. It gives us kind of like these open conversations that I think more of us need to be having. And mm -hmm. that, you know, that also makes me think of the Ham for Change series and the um, mm -hmm. histories happening in Georgia. Like those were really powerful and uh, Ham, um, Ham for Progress, like the whole series. And I know you've been such a big part of that. Can you talk about um, how that started and what it was like to to put that on. Yeah, um, I'll just say like that original cast is a very special group of people. And I think the show is very special and I'm sure a lot of fans feel this that in that it does really inspire action, I would say. And whether that for you means creative action or political action or to clean your room action, like it's literally just like, 
it just feels like something is possible, I think. And I think it has to do with the subject matter of the show. Like you're talking about the origin of a country. And then I think it also has to do with the people that are in the room, which is just incredibly creative, intelligent, passionate, and compassionate people um, who are, you know, minded towards what it means to be human. And so that is just a, it's a recipe for just inspiration, right? For other people. I'd rather be political than clean my house for sure. <laughs> Me too. Uh, um, I, uh, so with that, coming together again last summer for the film coincided again with a summer protest and cries for Black Lives Matter and, you know, and cries of injustice and, and, and really wanting change which was not different than when we opened, no, the 2020, or sorry, 2016, when we were doing the Tony Awards and all of that. So it was, that was another summer of a lot of protests and a lot of activism and a lot of unrest. And we were experiencing all of that in the show. Um, that was the summer if, if, if anyone has trouble remembering, um, like think about, okay, so we released the, the, the movie was released on July 3rd. July, mm, was it 3rd, 4th, and 5th, or 5th? There were three days in a row last in that summer of 2016 where you had Alton Sterling was murdered, Philando Castile was murdered, and then you had a, a shooting in Dallas where police officers were murdered. A Black Lives Matter protest where a shooter not a protester, but a shooter open fire. So it's just, and it made me really look at like where we were as a country and just think this is just, it's hurting. It, this is hurting everyone. Like this isn't, it's not about black and white. It's not about black and blue. It's like the system is not working. And um, that was, you know, the summer that we opened and coming back to it this summer, coming back to the cast in the middle of a pandemic, but around this show with what felt like another opening, um, it was really Oak and um, Morgan who like, and I kind of, you know, joined on, Oak basically hit me up and hit Morgan up and was like, and hit maybe like Renee and Leslie, like a, it's just sort of like put out, you like put out a bat signal and was like, yo, let's do something ourselves. Like, let's pull the original cast together and like figure out a thing to do. So over some very long Zoom meetings and trying to figure out some things, basically Oak and Morgan produced the hell out of that Ham for Change event along with Looped Live. And there was also another um, event prior, uh, another what were the parties? They were those like COVID, like famous people parties. We did one of those. Um, but anyway, this was the, <laughs> scratch that. Um, we were doing. <laughs> this is not a moment, it's a move. <laughs> <laughs> rewind, rewind. Um, but yeah, they put together this Loop Live event. Loop Live was incredible. Like they were just, it was such an incredible platform um, that allowed us to, have a show that they like stage managed and you know were technical support and do all of this and then also like were able to connect us with fans on their platform through phone calls and, and through their app and we raised a ton of money um and it just was again i just i'm always blown away by what it means to be in a room with um those humans it's just so special and it felt so 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 good uh, especially we did three different events and the last one was with all of us and it felt so great. Um, the Georgia fundraiser, again, I was just so proud. I'm from Georgia, it's my hometown. And I was just crossing all of my fingers and toes for that, uh, you know, that runoff. And to be able to host it with Jonathan Groff, like who is just an incredible, incredible human. Like it was, again, just such a, I, I get so happy and excited and I feel so honored whenever I'm able to be a part of using that platform for for good and for for social progress and so ham for progress is also now a platform that Hamilton has to um amplify uh no but to to basically support and put out 
uh, messages of progress and change and, and hope um, and really activate. I think, again, the, they launched the, the, the channel was launched to inspire Hamilton fans, but really and truly, I think it is sort of like the symbiotic thing because I think Hamilton inspires action. And so I think just as much as it was meant to inspire fans, I think that it is inspired by the effect that the show has, that who the fans are, what the audience is for the show. And so it's just a nice coming together to be able to really build out, hopefully a platform that is both the cast and the, and the show itself and also engages the fans in a way to, to make change in their own communities, right? Yeah, exactly. Because I think when people see people that they look up to doing certain things, they think, well, I can do that too. And I should be doing that. And I think that's the power of Hamilton and all these videos is that original Broadway cast of Hamilton is a special thing that doesn't come around often, right? That this would become a phenomenon and that everyone would care so much and that it would become really this global sensation. And through all that, through great power comes great responsibility if you will <laughs> and it was it's really cool to see everyone rise up and uh, I'm not I'm not even trying it just kind of happens it sometimes. does sometimes it just happens <laughs> it's just part of the vocabulary but yeah. yeah when you when you do that and um <laughs> it's it's really special to have, to have been a part of that and to know that when we're donating our money and we're promoting these things that we know that they are going to good organizations and that they've been vetted and that these are like yeah. things that we should be doing on the ground level as much as we can. Yeah, that was a big part of the Ham for Change was um, making sure we wanted to, we did nine organizations rather than just one large one. And we had a lot of conversation about wanting to really, really uh, invest in grassroots as much as we could. And like there, you get into all these things where like, well, if the budget of a nonprofit is this, they can only accept a gift of this much. And so I think that's something we want to continue to do. And and I know that I know from Oak specifically that he wants to continue with this Ham for Change platform. Um, and so hopefully maybe there'll be another event, you know, this summer. Um, but I it really it was because I was like, it's so important for people to realize that like things look big, like Hamilton is a big thing. Uh, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter is a big thing. The movement for Black Lives is a big thing. The NAACP is a big thing. Like all of these organizations are big things. And sometimes you're like, well, how do I get involved? Like the, that's the name that I see. How do I get involved? Like literally go to your local newspaper, <laughs> like go to your local like organizations, go to your local like shelter, go to your local, like see what's happening next door. And so we wanted to like do break it out into smaller, like specific organizations, because then you can see and be educated about different like organizations that are all moving towards the same thing. Everyone's working in a different way. I work in a different way. I have different skills. I have a different skill set than somebody else. Everyone, it, ta it literally takes everyone to just find the place to plug in. And I'm very like, I just encourage literally anyone and everyone get involved in your hometown, in your community, where you live, where you eat, where you shop for groceries, where you buy gas, like know what's going on in your local government, know who your local, 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 local people are, like your counselors, like know who those people are, write them a letter and be like, yo, I just saying I, hey, it's me. I live in your district. Like just, it just matters. It matters a lot. And that is a great way to get involved and like not just think like, oh, I got to give a lot of money to this one big thing. Give small. It can make a big difference to somebody in your in your hometown who's maybe trying to get an initiative off the ground. And maybe you can come alongside and help or, you know, offer financial support or community support. You never know. You just get involved. Yes, yes, yes. And it does take a village to do this. So this would be a perfect opportunity to share any nonprofits or charities that you're passionate about that you'd like to share with us. Yeah, so definitely after, um, for me, after 2016, or during 2016, this, you know, everyone evolves. Like, I, I remember, um, like last summer, I felt like there was this like sort of refrain of it's too late or like we've been saying this and it's true. Like we are, too, we're all late. Everybody's late. And I will say that my journey with um, where I want to fit in with work uh, 
with like being active and and working for change and working for progress um, evolved over a, a number, a number of years. Because um, sometimes it took things happening now for me to make sense of something that happened to me when I was a kid or that I witnessed when I was a child. So it's just, we're putting it together, work as fast as you can, read as much as you can. There's so many resources, so like be engaged. But I will say a pivot point for me or a pivotal point for me uh, was post Hamilton. Uh, I immediately went and did a show off Broadway. And then at the start of 2017, I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> I wanted to shift my focus a bit in my career um, as well. And, and just work on some different things. I wanted to take a break. And I was like, I want to be involved. Like this election that we just had, 2016 was such a charged year. It was another thing that was very similar to 2020. And so I wanted to get involved and I didn't know how and I didn't know what to do. And I just started saying yes to things uh, that I thought might be a way in and having conversations with people who I thought might have something, you know, who were minded towards that. And it was not like a direct, like, go here, go here, go here. It was just like, I know this person and this person. And I, those people are still are in my life, but I've, I kind of settled into, uh, I was circling sort of like arts because that's what I do. That's my skill. That's what I have in my hand and education, which was a thing people were always asking me to do, was why don't you teach? Why don't you do a thing? I've always been a bit of a communicator. I like to talk, I like to engage with people. Um, and so I kind of start. I was like, how do I mix these things together? And I found a way in through education, arts education. And so two organizations that I work with a lot um, in the city and have been for the past four years are uh, the Arthur Miller Foundation, and they uh, work to their like goal mission is to have a dedicated theater teacher in every uh, classroom, in every school, in every classroom, don't you wish? Uh, a dedicated theater yes. teacher in, <laughs> right? in every school, in every public school in New York City. Uh, we are the theater capital of the world. And yet most, like an embarrassing amount of most schools do not have a theater teacher, much less a theater program. So that is, I work with them in fundraising. I hosted their gala, helped to produce and host their gala this past year, the virtual gala. Um, I work with workshops and facilitating things with both teachers. I've choreographed their students for their galas in years past. So I've, I've been involved with them in, in a few different ways. And I just, I adore working with them because they really support the teachers and what resources they need. And it, the way that it works, in case anyone's interested, is teachers, uh, they help teachers get certified as theater teachers. So they want a theater teacher in every classroom. They help these teachers get their certification and they support the teachers for three years. So if this teacher is establishing a new theater program in a school, they support them for three years with training and resources and everything and support everything they would need to create a sustainable theater program within that school. Um, and I could go on and on about it, but it's a really wonderful, wonderful program. And then I also work with Epic Theater Ensemble, which is actually an off-Broadway company. And they also have lots of um, after-school programs and in-school programs with uh, schools in the Bronx and uh, in Harlem. And it's in New York City, New York City Public Schools as well. And I work, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. These two organizations are incredible. I'm obsessed with both of them. <laughs> and Epic Theater Ensemble, I get to work with the students a lot. And I started working with them. Basically these kids, <laughs> these students had seen Hamilton and they were like, we want everything to look like, Ham like we want our work to look like Hamilton. So they write and produce their own original work. Sometimes they're taking um, works of Shakespeare and they're sort of refitting the plot and the story and the characters around a current event. So I worked with them on um, Macbeth and they translated it instead of it being like a Scottish island, it was an island in the Caribbean and they were really focusing on the hurricane. And instead of um, it being about the kingdom, it was about, um, it was about a, a big drug corporation, like a big pharmaceutical company. And they started dealing with all of these ideas about, you know, who can get access to medicine and relief for people and who's making the profits and who control. So it was just like all of this, like, and these are like high school students, like coming up with these stories, you know, and um, I work with them a lot. I coach them on movement a lot and try to like 
take their stories in and talk about what it means to make a character move and put like embody someone and stage a piece, you know, stage a work dramatically. And I adore them and I love working with them as well. And I think they're incredible and they're gonna change the world. Um, so those are two organizations that came directly out of me looking for uh, something to put my hands on and, you know, to, to really work with and, and have a space uh, to be active. I'm, I'm <laughs> shying away from the word activist because I think it's such, <laughs> I just like, I think of act, I just like, there's so many people out here doing so much. Um, but it is, I think being active, like putting, taking action, putting your hands on something, that's how I ended up um, sort of involved with those two. And I love it. Amazing. Wow. Thank you for sharing both of them. I've I've kind of heard and done some stuff with both of them, especially Epic Theater this past summer, but it's really cool to to hear how much you're involved with it. And now I'm going to dive a little deeper. Yeah. And, yeah. And speaking of that, so we have a few minutes left and I had like a few things to talk about. I'm going to just throw them all at you that you can just kind of answer at will. So we've got like Smash, Fosse Verdon, My Fair Lady, Oklahoma, right? Like the, just like <laughs> Memphis, right? There's just like all these things. You you did touch on uh, Memphis earlier and Rocky. So just um all these things. And for anyone who saw earlier, I had posted this video of you performing I Can't Say No from Broadway Under the Stars, which was oh, so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what do you want to know? What do the people want to know? I'll answer any and all questions. I, uh, yeah, I've had a really great, great, great career. Oh, Black Dance yeah. History. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, that, that is another thing that I started during uh, this pandemic. I started a, uh, company organization called Homegrown Arts Alliance. And for me, again, it was about where do I want to get involved? What matters to me? What's important to me? And, uh, I just, I was, I was here in New York. It was during COVID and <laughs> during COVID as if it's ended. Um, <laughs> it's still oh going my on. God, I just had to catch oh. my during COVID <laughs> now. Uh, but it was the middle of, it was like this time last year. I was just like missing. Like, I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, what are we doing with our time? There's a lot of teaching and we were figuring out virtual classes. And I was like, well, I, I, I like teaching, but what do I care about when it's teaching? And I, I care about creating community. I don't care about making someone a Broadway star. I really would not trust me to make that happen for you. Like I can help, I can coach, I can give you resources. Like, and I really, I love sharing skills, but like mostly what I love is what happens when we get in the space and share together and learn together and talk about art. So Black Dance History was an event that we did in February, Black History Month. And I, again, in conversation with my local, uh, with a dance studio where I took when I was in high school with our studio director and another African dance studio that's based in my hometown of Macon. I basically wanted to get people from my hometown and artists that I know and love like from the industry and get them all in a room together, which is pretty much impossible except for Zoom and except for some of the things we've discovered over the past year. So we took, I basically, um, this uh, Pilar Loudon of my hometown in Macon, Georgia, led African dance classes. And then uh, some of my uh, colleagues, uh, Ricky Tripp, who's also a Hamilton alum, Dion Figgins, who's just a force of nature. Um, she was a Motown alum, Memphis alum, and Dominique Kelly, who is an incredible dancer choreographer. He uh, was, he worked on In the Heights, choreographed, uh, contributed choreographically to In the Heights with Aunt, working with Andy. And then also, um, I think he was in it. I can't remember if he was in it. I think he was in it. And then he, now he's a choreographer. I worked with him doing Singing in the Rain regionally a couple of years ago. Anyway, they taught classes in tap, jazz, ballet, and we talked about the connections between African dance and dance today and dance styles that you're familiar with today, including dance styles from Hamilton and a lot of those things. And it was just so nice to have a mixed, like, diverse group of people from Georgia and Michigan and LA and, ev and New York and everywhere talking about the roots of this dance style um, as it relates to black history. And I'm very interested in like, you know, I think it's a great way to learn about culture is to eat the food, is to dance the dances, is to try, it's just to really like humble, be humble and come to something that's unfamiliar and try to understand it. And I think it's a good way in. 
like, you know, learn to learn the dance and then, and, and listen to the language and listen to the people and, and immerse yourself in a thing before you ever try to like come to a, a, you know, a judgment or ever try to come to a conclusion about it. Cause it's just a great way to learn. So I got involved with that just the same way. And I'm, yeah, we'll have more events and things coming up, but for me, it's about creating community and connecting people from my hometown now um, with industry pe- professionals. Really paying it forward. That's wonderful. It's really mm. lovely. We did a summer, uh, sort of like a virtual summer camp last year with all artists like uh, Gray Henson from Mean Girls is from my hometown of Macon, Georgia. F. Michael Haney, who was playing Olaf on tour is from my hometown. Hannah Kasolka is like a television star. She was one of the sisters on The Exorcist. And uh, she, we grew up dancing together in my hometown. So we all taught virtual classes to students current students in Georgia. And it was just so great to like connect with them. I'll be working with um, the Otis Redding Foundation, which is based in my hometown. Otis Redding Jr. was um, from, is from Macon, Georgia and his daughter, Carla Redding runs the foundation there. So I'll be teaching and doing some things with Homegrown with them. Um, it's lovely. It's the best way to connect. Get into your hometown. <laughs> yes, 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 do it. So, okay, maybe like a one minute story because I'm I'm not gonna keep you past it, but I want I I loved watching um I just rewatched Fosse Verdon's uh first episode just because the dance was so beautiful. Like, what was that experience like? Were there any fun like little tidbits or stories from it? Oh, I'm so glad you chose that. Yeah, I it was the best ever. Like it was the coolest thing ever. Fosse is just like I, it is why I love jazz and it's why I love dance. Room Where It Happens is my absolute hands down favorite number in Hamilton. Like, I love getting into an Andy Blankenbuehler jazz class. Like, it is the ish. Like, you got to get in there. It's so good. It's so juicy and meaty and just so much in it. So, the chance to do that show, do that number, and then play Paula Kelly was just insane. And um, we also spent a ton of time with Dana, who was like, teach. She like danced in, with Fosse and with Gwen. Like she was in the room with them, and she was coaching us on like the movement and just sitting with the stories. Again, I'll say it's not just like when you're trying to learn a thing, you got to sit in it, like and really listen. Um, it was a thing we talked about yesterday on Chaos Pins with the women, and I'm just like, so many people want to know well, what do I do, how do I educate myself. Sometimes you just got to sit down and listen and be in the world, and that's how I felt with that show. I just felt like it was such an opportunity. They were doing such good work and such good research that you were able to just sort of like immerse in that experience. And so you'll notice, like some of the things are shot for shot. Like they were really trying to like recreate. Okay, so if that's the shot, then that means they were here and that's how the camera's gonna track. So when we film it, that's how it goes. And one of my favorite things was my costume, period, was my favorite thing. It's like the gold, like halter, so beautiful. Um, but I was I was trying it on, you know, they're recreating the costumes, they're recreating everything. They have like shots, like screenshots of like the film version and they've like closed up on like the eye just to like see the makeup. And so they were like looking at like my eye makeup and they were like, do you think that's like glitter paste or is it glitter, loose glitter on top of a thing? Or is it like just a glitter shadow? Like they're literally going through with that kind of detail on like what the lipstick was and, and the shape and the shade of the, th- it was just insane. And my costume had these little like gold medallion coins on them. So I tried on this whole costume. We're like two weeks out from shooting, a week out from shooting. And they were like, we need you to come back in for a fitting. And I get back in. They were like, we realized we had the wrong fabric and we found the right fabric and we're remaking your costume. So just that level of detail, because it, and it was, it was noticeable. Like I was like, that makes sense. Like what they had given me was beautiful. But once they realized, they were like, we realized it's these little coins. It's not this. And so they found that thing and then they made it. That is the level of like just detail and care. And I just thought it was such a way to honor the work of every single person, right? Not just the actors and not just Fosse and Gwen, but the costume designer and the seamstress and the makeup artist and the makeup, you know, designer, like all the work that think about all the labor that went into that iconic piece. And then, t- and then all the labor that went into it again. And I tell you, every single person 
ha was like so dedicated to the vision on that set. And so it was so special. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Wow, I, it's so cool to hear these behind the scenes stories. I really do love hearing from, you know, the lead to the ensemble, to the costume designer, to the changer, to the lights. I mean, it's it really takes a village to make a show happen, a Broadway show, a regional show, film, television, and to hear the amount of detail that goes into that and yeah. the little changes that now I'm gonna rewatch it for like a third or fourth time probably. And like to pay attention to the costumes and the makeup in a, way that just is so so special so wow cool thank you it's that was the best part of what we do this is the last thing i'll say is the best part of what <laughs> we do is the people that the people that we do it with and they are a lot of them are the people you will never meet and never see but those are the people who are out of work right now and when we talk about bringing theater back and reviving theater and the events and some things that are being put on without those people being employed and without those, not just the actors, because I will tell you there are actors who are not being employed, but when you, we are not employing ushers and, and wardrobe and we can't talk about bringing back theater we shouldn't talk about it that way if we're not bringing those people with us. We can talk about being able to put on an event and a live event and that's beautiful and exciting and like, I definitely wanna go to it, right? But when we talk about bringing back theater, it's not a building, it's not the name of an organization, it's not a neighborhood, it's the people. And I, this, this pandemic has really shown that uh, we don't think that way in the way that we should all the time, but those people, we, it, it is incredible, like the, the effort and the integrity with which people work, the integrity with which a quick changer will fill up your water bottle so that you can go do the thing. Like it's just, or we'll literally quick stitch something for you in an emergency so that you, you feel good on, so that you can do your job. It's just, we really have to think about what theater means. And the, that's why I talk about the labor that goes into it because it's something that has, um, unfortunately not had uh, not been as people have not been as loud about so when we're coming back and we are coming back but really keep those people in your as you think about theater and what you love keep those people in your in your hearts and and hold hold the theater hold, hold people accountable for getting them back to work Ooh, yeah. yes 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 to all of that Ooh, well that was that was brilliant, thank you. Yes, everyone who's a part of it makes theater possible and we need to be looking out for everyone. So I'm so glad you said that, perfect, perfect. Um, and yes, oh my gosh, I I can't wait for, I can't wait to thank every person in the theater when I go back all We're crying. gonna be yes. a mess. We're gonna just be like a whole, it's gonna be gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love um, that theater is like church. It's the people not feeling, I always talk about that. It is, it's like a sanctuary, it really is. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. is. Yes, yes, yes. So where where can everyone find you on social media? And just any final words that you came into today wanting to make sure to say to your fans? Oh, you can find me at, at Sasha Hutchings on Twitter and on Instagram. You can also visit homegrownartsalliance.com to keep up and, you know, with our uh, events and join a newsletter. And, um, you know, I'm just out and about moving and shaking. And um yeah, anything I wanted to say, take care of yourselves, drink water and get a good sleep and, you know, pet a dog or water a plant when you can. Yes, do do all of those things. <laughs> pet a dog and water that plant. Live your best life. <laughs> 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 yeah, so thank you. Um, Y'all can find me at B-Way Show. That's B-W-A-Y-S-H-O, as you see over here. We have B-Way Show, the podcast. Lauren Boyd's second episode is coming out next Wednesday. So stay tuned. And I just appreciate you so, so much for coming on and taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching. See you at the show. Bye.